Hey, it's Devin, and this is the Youngbloods. What is going on, everybody? Hope everybody's having a wonderful morning or day or whatever it is where you are, where you listen to this, where you watch this. I hope you're having a fantastic rest of your day, to be honest. I mean, it's good days are always nice to have good days. Everybody needs a good day. You know, the, the reality is, is uh, if you're not having a good day, then that's probably your own fault because you've allowed someone to interfere with your day. So there's that. But you don't, you, everybody needs to have a good day. So everybody needs to just be happy and get whatever the problem that you think you're having in your life, get over it. And honestly, I promise you, it will be fine. So there's that. There's That's me and my two cents when it comes to life in general. But yeah, uh, hope everybody's doing well this to, today and they're getting everything that they need. They've had a, they, they've gotten some good food. I know I had some good food today. Um, my typical diet as of late has been um, steak and eggs. That's it. Just steak and eggs. And my wife calls me earlier today. Um, and she says, uh, she's just seeing me. She's like, Oh, you're eating eggs again. I'm like, yep, eating eggs again. <laughs> and so she, uh, um, on, on the way home, I was sitting here at the desk doing some more, getting things prepped for the show, getting some ideas put together for another show and, you know, working on just some random other things. And then all of a sudden, um, she walks in and she's got me some R and R barbecue. <laughs> so, which means I got some sausage and some uh, uh, what do you call it? Some uh, what is it called? Got some sausage and she got me some uh, um, uh, ribs. Yeah. So that was what my wife did for me today, which was actually kind of cool and amazing. I'd love it because when she, when she takes care, of, my wife takes care of me so well. You know, I, I think that's the problem with most people in this world. We lack the ability to recognize awesome things when it happens. And we, when we don't recognize the awesome things, we tend to just forget and, and just kind of move on. And we're just, we kind of act like big jerks, to be honest, or we shouldn't. You know, the reality is nothing in this life is that hard where we have to sit back and worry. You know, we have small blips of life that are, that are difficult, but honestly, it's just a blip. Who cares? It, that's all it is. It's just a blip. Of course, I say this, and I've gotten some hate mail today. Some wonderful, wonderful hate mail. <laughs> I actually, there's three or four of them. They're kind of mixed in a couple hundred emails that I got. Um, so I, 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 I grouped some of them together. I probably won't read all of them, but honestly, it's kind of amusing the things that people say, especially, you know, I don't know. It, people are people, you know, that's how that goes. People will, will say whatever they want to say and they'll do whatever they want to do. And then they'll, they'll, uh, you know, pretend that they're going to be mad at you, but you don't know me. All I am is just a guy that talks about things and gives people advice. That's all I am. That's all I do. So yeah, whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, I guess we can jump into a couple of these real quick just to get things rolling. Um, do how far at the top? I skipped around a little bit on some of these things, and I'll go back to them. I got the hate mail at the bottom, but that's okay. We can deal with the hate mail later. Um, I was excited yesterday the fact that we finally had the great grand conclusion to the great lizard heist. Um, story, moral of the story there is: don't go to a party and get drunk, and don't steal someone's uh, you know, bearded dragon. <laughs> because that's not nice. People like to have their pets. I know my, my wife, if someone was to actually me too, but any, if anyone was to try to steal our animal, that would be the end of them. And that would be, there would be no more. Yeah. That's like kidnapping a child. You just don't do it. It's, it's not right to try to do that. And so if you steal someone's animal, you're pretty much setting yourself up for, um, disaster. That's all I'm going to say. So, Anyway, I guess I'll jump into these things. If you guys want to jump jump in and go live with me, perfectly fine. Uh, we can have a conversation. We can talk. We can do whatever you want to do. It's literally, it's all, for me, this is all about a conversation. I mean, I've got emails, but I don't have to read the emails. Honestly, I can talk to anybody. And if you got something that you want to get off your chest, you want to uh, talk about something that just may maybe something that you want to um, you know brag about. Whatever, I don't care. If you just need some good dad advice, I got you on that one too. So. 
whatever you want, we got, feel free to jump in and ask questions, and I'll be glad to um, add you to the live, and, and we'll see what happens. So anyway, if not, then I'm just going to read emails until that happens, until other people jump in that say that, that, that they want to talk to. It's all good. So anyway, so here we go. Hey, Devin. I love my partner, but ever since they got in, but ever since they got into conspiracy theories, I feel like I'm living uh, with a complete different person. It started small, like questioning whether we actually landed on the moon, but now they're down a rabbit hole of all kinds of wild theories. They spend hours watching these videos, talking about lizard people and secret government experiments. I want to ex- uh, be supportive, but I also want to live in reality. How do I handle this without losing my mind? Sounds like to me you're trying to control somebody. I really, and that sounds may sound rude. It sounds like to me that you're trying to control, um, you know, someone and what they enjoy. So what it comes down to is you can say stuff. So you can you can, to answer this. I mean, it's, it's easy. You just have a conversation and say, you know, just because you like something doesn't mean I I have to like it either. But I can support you in it, and you can believe whatever you want to believe. That's fine. But that's you know that's the problem. It's I think a lot of times when we get in relationships, we we tend to think that one of us has to be the dominant one, or the other one has to be the you know the less dominant one. When in reality, you just need to treat each other with respect, and it'll be fine. So that's a, that's to me that seems simple. I mean, conspiracy theories. I love entertaining a good conspiracy theory. You give me a conspiracy theory that makes my mind go, uh, that honestly is amazing. I love that. That would be the, the greatest thing in the world. If someone if someone had a good conspiracy theory and they threw it at me, I'd be like, okay, tell me about it. And whether I believe it or not, I don't care. It just comes down to gives me something fun to talk about. So there's that. So, But on the other side... There can't you can take things too far, and think people can take things where it's just kind of going down that weird rabbit hole where you're going, "What the heck are you talking about?" And I get that, but don't let it drive you crazy. Be supportive, love the, love your partner, and guess what? It'll be okay. Don't don't stress over these things. Seriously, it will be fine. So, all right. Hey, Devin, I used to be a strong, independent person. With, with dreams, ambitions, but now I'm pretty sure my two-year-old is running my life. He's tiny, but he but his demands are endless, and I spend the day catering to them. How do I, how did I lose control so fast? More importantly, how did I get how do I get back without a meltdown from bo- both of us? I love my kid, but his power dynamic needs to be seriously reset. Well, that's easy. And I'll tell you why it's easy because you have created this problem. This is a, (laughs) and I'm not trying to be rude again, but you have created a problem. You have catered to this child so much that the child thinks it can control anything and everything that goes on in the house. Now it sucks. Because you you probably don't like didn't like hearing the 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 ch- the baby cry at all, and so you gave you know you gave into uh, all these uh, these you know these things as you're uh, as you're um, as you're raising this kid, and so now it's a two now it's a domineering two year old that's running your house. The only thing you can do, and you're gonna have to just suck it up. You're going to have to sit back, relax, and be the adult. You're going to have to li- be able to listen to the crying because it's going to happen. When the, the kid doesn't get what it, what, uh, what it wants, it's going to cry and pitch a fit. And you're in the two-year-old's, two-year-old stage, which I honestly think three-year-old stages were worse than two-year-old stages, but they're still bad. So that being said... You just gotta be. You just gotta be the adult and make it happen. Seriously, you gotta just sit back, relax, let the um, let the fit happen, ignore the fit, move on, and it's going to for sure be okay. You just gotta. You're, you just gotta learn to live with it. And 
once once you know the kids like kids like boundaries they really do kids t- kids need boundaries and they need to understand that that they're not in charge then that you know what just because they put your foot that doesn't mean they're getting, they're getting what they think they're going to get that's all irrelevant it doesn't matter so yeah you, you you'll figure it out but that's what i would do i would honestly you just got to learn to live deal with the the brat <laughs> we'll call him call the kid a brat because you have to set the standard in your home on what's going on because you're the adult. You're supposed to be raising your kid. The kid's not supposed to be raising you. So if you want any type of a sanity, put your foot down. Simple as that. You know, and I think I think part of this probably stems from, and this is what what a lot of what tends to happen to a lot of people. A lot of a lot of people don't like they 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 always say I don't want to be like my parents. And because they say stuff like that, because they're like, well, my parents did this type of thing. You know, your parents probably had it right for the most part. And we give, we always give our parents a hard time and we shouldn't give our parents a hard time. Your parents did the best they could. Honestly, even if your parents were total a-holes, they did the best they could. I mean, seriously, you know, just like we're raised, we're seeing our kids, uh, grow and be raised they're seeing us grow and be raised and some of us have to had to raise ourselves so yeah that's just the reality it'll be okay i promise you it will be fine stop stressing stop the the, you know just don't don't take it personal be the adult that's all you got to do hey Devin, i'm 35 happily married and living a good life the thing is everyone keeps asking when we're going to have kids the the truth is i don't want them ever but when i say that people treat me like there's something wrong with me even my parents keep dropping hints about grandkids am i a bad person for wanting to a, a life without children how do i make people respect my choice without feeling guilty and selfish here's the deal you can't force anybody to give you the respect that you think you need or you think, or you deserve. That is an impossibility. And the, I, and the, the whole chore of having a kid, you know, we've got five, obviously we've got five. Um, when you have kids, your life changes. You know, I know my wife and I, we, we were our, uh, our personal life. It wasn't until like our youngest was basically a preteen where we actually felt comfortable going anywhere without our kids even then my wife still gets real nervous um it, it, you just gotta not care what other people think that's the reality you you state your opinion and it's you probably don't dis you probably like kids but you just don't want any kids yourself so because you don't want any kids yourself doesn't mean you're a bad person honestly <laughs> and this may sound rude you probably believe, uh, no, that's, I'm not even going to go there. That, that, that's just assuming something. I'm going to just say this. You would probably make a good um, parent, but not everybody is, is not everybody could, can handle being a, kid, a, a parent. It is hard. Don't, don't let, don't let the, well, in, in the infamous words of you two, don't let the bastards gr- grind you down. Stop caring what other people think. Seriously, it doesn't matter. If you and your partner are happy with the with the choice that you guys are making, that's what matters the most. You, that's the only thing that matters. So stop caring about what other people think and, on, and care about what matters to you. It's okay. Don't 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 be all grouchy about it. It will be fine. Yeah. All right. See what else we got here. Um, hey, Devin. We've heard about, we've all heard about breakups in romantic relationships, but how do I break up with a friend? Okay. I've got this friend I've known for years, and lately she's become totally a total energy drain. Everything is about her, and she never listens when I when I need support. I'm tired of being her emotional punching bag. 
can I break up with her or is that too harsh? What's the right way to handle this without feeling like a jerk? You're not a jerk for one. There are people in everybody's lives that are, that they become an emo, emotional drain on them all the time. We all know those people. We all have those friends. And honestly, if the, if this friend of yours, if all they want to do is complain and all they want to do is just sit there and, and, you know, just suck the life out of you, you got to put up a boundary. You boundaries are important. If you don't have a, if you don't have a boundary, even with your close friends that you uh, are not the, the drains on you, you put up a boundary and you set that boundary and then you just keep going because the reality is it doesn't matter what what they do. They're always going to be a drain. And so if they're going to be a drain on you, you just got to sit back and say, you know what? Not today. I mean, honestly, you don't have to hang out with them. They probably, they, the thing is when they call you, you always say yes. Or they come by and you always say yes. That's the problem. You got to, it is perfectly okay. And it's perfectly fine to say no. If you put up boundaries between you and people and you say no, that will change your life. Especially if they're an emotional drain on you, you got to say no. Saying no is actually going to make you a better person. You'll, you actually learn how to set up boundaries with other people. You'll also learn how to set boundaries up for yourself. You can say no. Saying no is easy. I mean, I can want, I can do this. No. Just kidding. <laughs> All joking aside, it's that, it's that simple. You know, uh, just don't let them be a emotional punching bag. The art of no is important, and anyone can do it. All right, let's see. Hey, Devin, I'm up for a promotion at work that I really want. But there's one big problem. It requires public speaking. Even, even the thought of standing in front of a crowd makes me break out in a cold sweat. I've avoided it my entire career, but now it turned... Now I can't run from it any longer. Do you have any tips on getting over the fear of public speaking or should I just accept that I'm not cut out for this? If someone's going to give you an, a chance and a raise and, and, and a, for a position that you've wanted all this time, but you're afraid because you, you don't want to do public speaking, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta get out of that, that comfort zone. Honestly, public speaking is not that bad. And let me tell you what, the first time you do it, you're going to screw up and you're going to, it's going to be hard and you're going to, you're going to make, it'll make yourself mad and you'll be embarrassed. And guess what? It'll be okay. So first, my first advice is to just do it. Second advice, honestly, you want to know the, the big secret practice, practice in front of the mirror. Practice. Do you know, honestly get on TikTok, get on uh, Instagram, get on uh, wherever, whatever social media you want to, and start live streaming. You'll have you'll see people pop up, and they're going to be listening to you, and that's going to be l- slightly no different than actually public speaking. So you just if you can get comfortable talking to a camera to yourself, then what happens is when you do it in public, you can just pretend that you're talking to yourself in a camera. It's not that bad. Let the cold sweats come. Let, you know, just deal with that. You'll be fine. It will literally be okay. Yeah. You know, the first time I ever spoke in public, well, I was I was terrified. I can tell you. But you know what? It's no big deal now. I, I do know, when, well, it's no big deal because I just forced myself to do it. I and mean, believe it or not, I'm actually a, a, a very shy person. <laughs> But I forced myself to get out of that shy box and I go do things that, that make me uncomfortable. And because I do things that make me uncomfortable, it forces me to be a better person. So if, you're, if you have uh, any problems on getting out of that thing, out of, out of that shell, just do it. Because if I can do it, you can do it. Anybody can do it. So yeah, you'll be okay.
Hey, Devin. Okay, this is kind of ridiculous, but hear me out. I'm starting to think my partner is secretly a superhero. They're always disappearing in, in random times, and every time I ask where they, they've been, I get the same vague uh, answers like, oh, I had to take care of something. Plus, they're way too good at fixing things in a, in a suspiciously, fa- suspiciously fast way. I'm losing it. Or could they really have a secret double life? Should I confront them or just let, let it go? Okay, here's the thing. As much as I would love to think that superheroes are real, and I'm serious in this, as much as I would, I really want to believe that superheroes exist, I think are, there are super people, but I don't think there's people who have superpowers. I think he's just pro- you know, they're probably just good at what they do. They probably know how to head things off. They know how to fix things. Now, the part about the, them disappearing and saying, well, uh, you know, it, they give you some vague answer like, oh, I just have to take care of something. I, they're hiding something probably. So don't stress over that. But say, hey, I want to be involved. Ask them to be involved. And the fact that they can take care of stuff so quick and fix things so quick, that is a testament to the right person. Um, you can ask my wife. She can tell you she has never once had to call a handyman whatsoever in our marriage because I can fix anything. I guess that's one of the that's one of the pros of being dyslexic is you can look at something and you can pretty much take it apart in your head in a three dimensional way, and then you can put it back together in the same exact way. So you physically can do it. You mentally can do it, and so that means you can physically do it. So there's that. So that, that's, you know, I, I worked for a, a uh, I was doing a, um, a, uh, a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a consulting g- job for a scooter company a few years back. And I worked for Ford Motor Company at the time doing this, this job. And what I was, <laughs> it was funny. They, they didn't, they lost a mechanic and I'm like, I can fix it. So, they're like, hey, do you know what you're doing? I'm like, no, but I'll fix it, figure it out. And so, honestly, I just did it, <laughs> right? I mean, really, it, it's one of those things. Is like, if if something's broken, I can fix it. It's just you, I just would look at it and I'd say, okay, I got this. Boom, take it apart, figure it out. There there were some uh, some issues with some of the uh, the parts, and not with the parts, with some of the scooters that they never were able to be turned on. And so I tur- I looked at them and I you know I. I Took it, tore them apart. I read a bunch of stuff online. I'm like, I guarantee it's this one part. And I pulled that part out. I swapped it with the with some busted, broken scooters, and all of a sudden they worked again. So I revived a bunch of scooters that way. I think it was like almost thirty of them that were like that. But yeah, those days are gone. But essentially, I mean, the thing is, it, it's a uh, don't be, <laughs> let them be a superhuman person because superhuman people are amazing, and you need, and you keep it. Those people need to uh, um, keep around. Those are good people. And you probably uh, you're, you're you're lucky to have a partner that can do that because not many not many people can do that. The, the the art of being able to fix things is pretty much gone. In our we have such a throwaway society that people don't know how to fix anything. They just you know they throw it away and they don't care. That's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Let's move on. Hey, Devin. I've been told by friends, family, and even strangers that I'm too nice. I thought being kind was a good thing, but apparently people think I let others walk all over me. The thing is, I don't like conflict, and I just want to keep the peace. But now I'm wondering if there's right if they're right. Am I being too, too much of a pushover? How can I stand up for myself without feeling like I'm being mean? Well, let's be, let's see, be, uh, Joe says, speaking of spin, came across a cracked head, crackhead video having sex with our van in, in our, yeah, that is, that, <laughs> I, I've, yep, that video does exist. I remember that video. Actually, uh, some things just need to just, oh my gosh. Yep, I remember that video. 
Yep, that is a. There are so many weird things that went on uh, with that with that company, and I was I was glad when I made my recommendation to for uh, Ford to get rid of the company that they um yeah that they they did and it wasn't just my recommendation it was actually there was I think there, there, if I remember right there was three of us doing what I did uh, what I was doing and we all recommended the same thing so yeah you all the poor vans that you guys main, maintained and kept going they got abused in multiple different ways I I, I wonder if there's a if, if there's a me too movement for um having uh relationships with with vehicles I'm sure there has to be. I mean, it's 2024. I mean, there, there, there's something going on out there for any of that. <laughs> um, as far as being too nice, you know, being too nice, it, there, there, you, there is a way. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> you know, there is a, uh, there is a, there is such a thing as being too nice. If you do let people walk a little over you because you just don't like conflict, that that can be a problem. You, you, there is nothing wrong with setting up boundaries and making sure that people know that there is a boundary. And you can be nice about it. You don't have to be a jerk about any of that stuff. You can just set you know set people straight. Say here's what I what, what here's, here's the things that I expect. And you, you someone says something, just say no. I'm telling you, if you the the art of no is so simple. And when you can do it, and you can, and you start and you learn to do it well, it is okay. You know, saying no is seriously it it is life changing. You know, I'm a, I think I'm a nice guy, but I also think I I I do know when to say when tell people back off. Um, and honestly, I do set boundaries from the beginning, and you're supposed to do that because boundaries keep you sane. Don't let people walk all over you. I mean, if you if you if you if you let people walk all over you, you're going to end up with roommates that you never expected to have or never wanted to have it's just something that you just did and that's not good that that that'll that'll backfire on y'all like crazy you knew you can the same thing if you're in a, if you're in a marriage then it's okay to say no too heaven forbid people actually stand up for their own for themselves you'll be you just do it seriously my advice is if people are seeing that you're, that you're kind of a pushover, that's probably partially true. But don't lose that that kindness because honestly, that's what makes you you. You know, nice people do exist and they do need to be out there, but they also have to have. You do have to put up a boundary for a little bit. So that's my opinion. Whatever. All right. Hey, Devin, I've been single for a while now, and all my friends are either married or in a long-term relationship. I'm happy for them, but I'm starting to feel like the odd one out at every gathering. It's like I've become the designated third will, and I'm not sure how to handle it without making things weird. How, how, do, I navigate the, the phase of the, how do I navigate this phase of my life without feeling like the eternal single friend? You're the eternal single friend. Sorry. Thing is, being single is not a bad thing, but also being in a, trapped in a in a bad relationship is a bad thing. You you can. Here's the thing: the only way you can get out of that is to find somebody, and to find somebody can be difficult. But you got to just put your hand put. Throw, throw your um, reel out there into the water. You know, get that lure out there in the water and see what happens. Now, as far as uh, not making it awkward for people, they if if they w- thought it was awkward, they would have told you. They would tell you, hey, you know, not today. So you, you just got to be able to be willing to... You, it's not... I'm going to say it. It's not that... You're, you're not in a bad spot. Don't feel bad about being uh, single. Although I can tell you, I do enjoy being married, but the, you know, being single is, it's a good place to be. You're, you're able to get yourself where you need to be financially. You have no worries other than taking care of yourself. Um, sure. You don't have the companionship that's that, the uh, mo- that you would want to have all the time around you, but don't feel bad being the third will. They, they want you to be around. That's why they have you around. 
That's why they talk to you. That's why they they they're pro, that's why they're inviting you to places. You're a good friend. You're just overthinking this. That's the problem. You are literally just overthinking this. Be comfortable with who you are. That's the bottom line. If you get comfortable with who you are, it will be fine. So, anyway. Again, if anybody wants to jump on and go live with me, I'm perfectly fine. We'll talk about anything you want to talk about. does not bother me. I like it. I'm always uh, up for meeting new people and, you know, discussing, you know, achievements, discussing anything people want to talk about. I'm perfectly fine with that. So, feel free to jump in and we'll figure things out. So, if you're watching on Facebook, jump over to Instagram or TikTok and we'll uh, add you that way too. But, yeah. Um, let's do this one. Dear Devin. Not a hey Devin. This was a dear Devin. My partner is a night owl and I'm an early and I'm an early bird. By the time I wake up with the sunrise, they're always heading heading to bed. It's making me it's making it hard to spend any real time together. We're constantly passing like a ship at in the night. And it's starting to feel like we're roommates more than partners. Is there any way in the sink to sync our schedules without one of us turning into a zombie? <laughs> mean what you're meaning is: is there any way to reset to, for for the the schedules to be working out better so you aren't up at night? No, no, yeah. So you're not up at night with your partner. So here's the thing. I'm probably looking at this as as they're you know one of you probably works third shift and the other the one the other one of you is working either first or second shift, and so you're you're passing each other during it when it's come to bedtime. Um, so my wife and I do that pretty much now for the most part. Like I go to bed pro- usually around two two thirty in the morning when she's usually we getting and she gets up in the morning um, around five thirty. So. We have a couple hours we're in bed together that we get to, you know, cuddle and, you know, whatever stuff happens and that type of type of stuff. But then the rest of the time is just a matter of, um, you know, she gets home from work and I'm doing all my prep stuff for shows and things like that and, all, and the other things that I do. So we do see each other, but it's not as bad as your situation. The only thing that can change is you, you guys have to, ch- you have to change your schedule. One of you guys has to switch shifts, get a different job. Or go to bed earlier. If no one has goes to if if it's if it's not a a, a work issue, then what this is this is a, a discipline issue of someone saying they don't want to go to bed. That's what that comes down to. Oh, excuse me, but sneezing and uh, yawning at the same time. That's a uh, that's interesting. I didn't really sneeze though. I stopped it. I don't have my uh, warm tea today. I just got my uh, water, so um, it'll be work. It it will be fine. Uh, you just the only thing you can do is just switch schedules, and then so both of you guys are go up during the same time time during the day. That'd be the only way to do this because one of you guys will be turned into the zombie, which meaning you. So yeah. <laughs> hey, Devin. Here's my dilemma. My neighbor has the most perfect lawn on the block, like professionally landscaped, golf course level uh, perfect. Meanwhile, my lawn, well, let's just say it's a little more wild. (laughs) I swear every time I see him outside, he's giving my yard the side eye, like he's silently judging my lack of lawn care enthusiasm is this all in my head or am i the neighbor am i the neighborhood eyesore should i care much more about my grass it's just grass rivers in the house how are you doing my friend hopefully you're doing well um i mean (sighs) here's the thing it, there's I do like a good yard, right? I do like a I like where um a nice manicured yard is amazing, to be honest. And but I don't know if I've got for my and I'm I'm probably more like you. I probably don't know if I, I don't know if I have the uh 
the what's the word the time or the the wanting to spend do, you know spend all that time in the yard. I'm the type of guy that I keep a yard clean and I like to go out and cut the cut the yard cut the grass and then come back in and be done and then or play with my kids in the yard. But I'm not going to be I'm not going to spend hours and hours and hours trying to make my my yard a golf course style um backyard. That just doesn't seem like it's fun to me. So yes, your neighbors probably judging you to be honest. But don't let it don't don't let it bother you. You you it will be okay. Let's do this. Seriously, it, it, you know, it's just a yard. The only time you'd have an issue with it is if you have an AO, an HOA and your HOA is, a, you know, they're just being weird about it. If your HOA puts pitches a fit about you having a, a, a bad yard, then you need to worry about it. Other than that, don't stress over it. Seriously, it's just a yard, just yard work. So do what you do what you do and keep on rolling and be happy. As long as your, your grass is not taking over the entire neighborhood, I think you'll be fine. Hey Devin. We're expecting our first baby in a few months, and my partner and I um, can't agree on any names. Every suggestion I make he hates, and every name he comes up with sounds like it's from a comic book. Seriously, he suggested Thor. I'm getting worried we'll we'll end up uh, naming our baby something completely ridiculous just uh, as a, just a compromise. Any tips on finding common ground without losing your, my mind? Here's the thing, okay? <laughs> I've my, I have a we have a child. We have five children obviously, but we have a child and his name is Logan Scott Youngblood. That is our son's name. And if you know anything about comic books, then you know that Logan, for one, is Wolverine. Scott is Cyclops, of course. And then Youngblood is actually my, just our last name. I couldn't, I didn't choose my last name. It was just what I had, right? It was what I was given. But on the other side, Youngblood is a pretty freaking awesome name too. So we gave our son two epic comic book names and then he got a cool last name. So if you're worried about trying to figure out the best name for your kid, it could be way worse than a comic book. I don't, I don't know if I would use Thor, but yeah, I it, no, there, there's better names out there than Thor, but you know, you just, what you need to do. And it, honestly go through every name you can possibly think of, right? Write them all down, boys and girls, back and forth, whatever whatever makes sense to you. Write all those names down. Um, pick whatever you think you like the most. And then, honestly, wait till you have the kid. And when you have the kid and you say, oh, this one looks like a Kyle. <laughs> or this one looks like a Karen. No, seriously, it, 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 you'll find the right. You're, the name of the kid will, will come to you. Like, you know, we have a son that, so my dad, uh, he, he hates his name. And... When it comes to names, he we told him we're going to name our kid after him. This was our youngest child, our last child, and we said we'll name him after name him after you. And my dad's like, please don't. And we're like, nope, it's already too late. So my dad he my dad goes by his initials versus his name, and so his initials are E B. So we didn't choose my dad's name. My dad's name is Earlton, and he you know my dad was born in 1940. So. That is a definite old timey name. So we chose Ethan, and the B is Briggs, where my bet my dad's middle name is Barber. So, so he my little my youngest son is E B Youngblood, just like my dad is E B Youngblood, and my grandfather is E B Youngblood. But my dad is named after my grandfather, and my son is got it. He's he's got some family names. Ethan is not. I don't think it's a family. No, Ethan is 
named after a friend of ours from Tennessee. Their their my wife would watch or care and, and hold their youngest or the, one of their son, one of their kids. They got twelve kids. I don't remember where he where their Ethan falls into play, but he, she would hold him for a little bit, and she so just liked the name, so that's where that name came from. So, but the middle name is a family name. So Briggs is a middle a good middle name. So yeah, there's that. But naming a kid, don't overcomplicate it. Don't overthink it. It will be fine. Seriously, just don't name them some weird name. Don't do a number or or fruit. I'm not a fan of fruit. I don't think fruit should be. Uh, people should name their their children after fruit. So that that's my opinion. But you know, don't stress over the name. All right. Hey Devin, I'm in I'm I'm in my early 30s, and I'm seeing. All the and it seems like all my friends are killing it. Great careers, buying houses, getting uh, promoted, while I'm stuck in a job I don't love, renting an apartment that's falling apart. I know I shouldn't have compared myself to them, but it's hard not to feel like I'm falling behind in life. How do I stop feeling so inadequate and start focusing on my journey? Stop comparing yourself to others. Go over your finances. If you feel like you should be further along in your finances, look at what you've got. What you, look at what you're doing, what you're spending money on, and see if you can cut some of that out. Get rid of some of you know. Get, get rid of a lot of things that you don't need. And if there's a house you want. Make sure you stash got enough money this stash aside to do it. There, there's a, there's a million things that you can do that can that would change how you how your life is done. Okay, there's seriously a million of them. You just got to do at least one and become proficient at that one. Then choose another one and become proficient at that one, and you'd be better. If you hate your job, why don't you find a, new, a different job? If it's a matter of education. Go get go back to school, get some education, or go to trade school and get some education at trade school. That's all this this it counts. You know, all this comes down to is you just have to take the step. So, are you stuck in your own comfort zone, in your own little circle, and not willing to do what it takes to get out of that? Honestly, that's probably where you are. You're probably stuck in that little spot where. You feel like that you should have more, but then also you're not willing to do the things that they've done. I mean, because honestly, to get where you think you want to be in life, it does require people to put in effort. Nothing's ever going to be given to you. You know, I hear people say, hey, I'll never be able to own a house. This whole housing market's gone out of whack, which is not, it's also true, but you can own a house. It's simple. Anybody wants to own a house, you can find a house. They're, and they're, they're, but you're like, oh, but it's going to be expensive. But yeah, it's probably going to be expensive. You know, I, I was uh, talking to a young lady once here, uh, here in Utah, and she was comparing um, her life to my life. And here I am, I'm 46 years old, and she's like, I'm 22, but when we're just talking. But the reality is, she's like, I'll never own a home. I'm like, you can own a home. She goes, no, I, I'll, I can never afford one. I said, I said, do you have a decent job? She goes, yeah. I said, do you make good money? I said, don't, have to tell, me, don't tell me the number. I said, don't, it's none of my business how much money you make. But you can say, yes, I make a decent amount, or no, I don't. She goes, yeah, I do make a decent amount. I said, okay, so why can't you buy a house? I don't, want to be in, I don't want to have to pay a house for the next 60, 70 years before it's even paid for. I said, okay, you don't have to do that. She goes, I do if I want to live in Utah. I said, okay, then there's the problem. Are you, You're not willing to ch- make a change in your life to go somewhere else where it can be cheaper. I can tell you right now, there's this there's place, this little Instagram page I follow called Ch- uh, uh, Cheap Old Houses. Love it. It's awesome. You can go on there and you can find houses and you, they give you links to where you can buy them and things like that. You can buy a house in Missouri for like 10, 15 grand. If you're willing to live in the country and middle of nowhere, and it sure, people are like, well, I need internet. Well, that's what you got Starlink for. There are ways to do what you want to do. The problem, your problem is, we, as, as all people do, we don't want to do the things that are difficult. We don't like difficult things. And we don't want to change, and we don't like change. Change is, is change is hard for everybody, but you can do it. You just have to do it. 
So if you're worried that, that you can't, you know, if you're if you're in your 30s and you're worried that you're not going to be able to have anything, then you have to change some things. Change your cell phone bill. Make it cheaper. Stop buying a new cell phone every freaking year. You don't need a new phone every year. Yes, a new iPhone comes out every year. Yes, there's a new Android, uh, Samsung, or whatever whatever phone you, you have that comes out every year that are slightly better. But you don't need one. You don't need to to upgrade. Do like my, my wife and I do. We upgrade every three every uh, at, at, the, at the soonest every two years, but at the latest every five years. So I'm currently sitting on what two and a half two years now on our phones. It's okay. I have no um, plan on upgrading. At least right now, um, because my phone works fine. So if you want to, if you want to change some things and you and you want just you got to one stop comparing yourself to others, and then two you need to just go in and say okay I need to do this differently. I need it if it's a financial thing cut things out. There's nothing wrong with cutting things out. I've told this story before and it's simple. People allow companies to charge way too much onto their uh, their out of their bank account, and one of those companies is Netflix. So tell me this. Tell me why you need Netflix every month. Seriously, why do you need to watch Netflix every month? You don't. So how you fix that is you don't allow Netflix to take any money out of your bank account. And how you do that is you go to grocery stores or Target or wherever and you buy those gift cards. Buy yourself a Netflix gift card. Take it home. You have to have a credit card on file. I do a note do so on this for the most part. So what you do, you get an old credit card that's got an expir- bad expiration date that the, exp- the card's expired, and you have that on the account because this is what we do. And then I take the my um, I take the gift card and I load the gift card, and then the gift card gives if it's a thirty dollar gift card, I do that, and um, then we have Netflix for you know what one quarter you know a, a couple of quarters a month. I mean, a year. So I'll buy it like at the, in the middle of the year and I buy it at the end of the year. And we can watch everything we want to watch on Netflix within two quarters. And then we can live without it for two quarters. And we'll, we'll bounce around. We'll have Netflix for two quarters. We'll have uh, Disney and uh, Hulu and all those things for two quarters. And we just bounce it back and forth. Because there's, re- there's really no need for people for any company to re- take any money out of your bank account. Because what happens is you you forget about that, and they want you to. That's why their subscription services do so well, is because we allow subscription services to deduct money out of our bank account, and we do. Oh well, it's no big deal. Yeah, I mean, it's, I I highly recommend not ever doing that. So you can keep track of your money way better by doing that, doing it that way. So you're in your thirties. You're going to be fine. You got a big, long life ahead of you. You there is so much time you have left. It's amazing. Now, all you got to do if you to just stop comparing yourself to other people. Be happy with who you are. Be happy with what you have. And if you're not happy with what you have, change things so you can make be happier with what you want and what you have. That's how that works. Let's see. Keep going. I'm gonna do two more, and then we will jump into the hate mail. Got to go. Got to talk about the hate mail. My son's like, "Do you really want to give them their 15 minutes of fame, Dad?" I'm like, "Yeah, why not? Who cares?" <laughs> He's like, "Are you gonna badmouth them?" I'm like, "Well, we'll, we'll we will find out." Uh, hey, Devin, I've been crushing it at work lately, but honestly, I'm overwhelmed. My boss keeps piling on more responsibilities, and I keep and, and I feel like I'm drowning. The thing is, I don't want to tell him because I'm worried he'll think I can't handle it. How do I ask how do I ask for help without looking weak or incompetent? Is there a right way to to admit you're struggling? No. There's there's nothing wrong with admitting that you're struggling. And how you fix that is you don't Okay, here's the thing. If you're paid salary, your job at the company is to be abused. If you settled for a salary, with no commission or nothing like that, it's just a basic amount of money, say a 50, 60, 70, 80, whatever, 100 grand, whatever it is, 
your company is going to throw as much work on you as they possibly can because it's more efficient for them to do it that way because they're paying you the money. So they're going to get, try to get as much, uh, you know, work out of you as they can. That is just how this, that's how this works now. And the same, it's also the same thing when it comes to being an hourly wage person. Um, hourly though, you have the benefit of if it's going to take you longer than 40 hours, you do get the overtime, which is nice. But I've never been a firm believer in uh, working for hourly wages. That's why I think a lot of, I think it's a good, I uh, think hourly wages is perfect for people who just want to settle. And I don't mean, I don't mean this to be bad. Some people probably get upset for me saying that they're, they're settling. An hourly wage job is you settling you're 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 just it, that's the, that you have settled on a number of how much your life is worth per hour that's what that is is that where i'm the type of person i prefer to have it where um i'm getting paid a commission or a lump sum or whatever cuz i know the what i'm worth and know my value so but as far as the all the work and responsibilities you have if it falls within your your realm just figure out and do it, and then you need to delegate. If you are in a position where you can help other people to learn, if you want to train someone to do what you're doing and it doesn't over, overload them, delegate some stuff down to them. There's nothing wrong with that. Honestly, most these days, you can do most most businesses and most uh, stuff going on these days, you can do most of that stuff with chat GPT. Using AI, I mean, holy, it, AI will even write code for you. So if you're a programmer and you're not using AI, that's crazy. Seriously, it can do almost everything. It is go, It is make. It is an amazing tool that will help you get where you need to go. So if it's something, this is something that can be helped, and you can do it with that. Do it that way. My daughter was uh, applying for a job, and she's like, "Dad, I don't know how to handle this." So we sat down and talked for a little bit, and I said, "Come here, real quick." And so we pulled up ChatGPT, and we typed in some. Uh, some uh, prompts and it pulled up the entire thing of what she needed to do. So she, we, she, we printed it off and she took that to her job interview and the, the owner of the company was like, wow, I didn't know you had to do this. Oh, this is awesome. How do you, how did this even work, work this way? And that's what, and she ended up getting the job because she would, she, we, we, I, I taught her the proper way to use a tool to help her to get something that she needs. So there's that. But yeah, I mean, you're obviously doing good at your job. Um, but you just need to you need to you need to stress less and learn to delegate. There are people out there that we, that you can get to help, and if anything, you can you can go to your boss and say, "Hey, I'm doing really well. But I've got all these different projects. Can I add someone to the mix?" And that they would probably appreciate that. Say, "Can can I get someone else to to help lighten the load with me?" So, well, then you'll have two people that are trained to do this, and it makes it where you can you're we're getting. Things done more efficiently. That's what you got to do. It's it's you know I hate to say it's not that difficult, but it's really not that difficult. So just get over yourself a little bit, and it'll work out. So, yeah. Hey Devin, I'm a lesbian. Okay. <laughs> it didn't stop there. Sorry. Hey Devin. I'm a lesbian, and I've been in love with my best friend for years. The problem is, she's straight. Okay, now I see where this is going. And we've been we've and we've never crossed that line. I value our friendship more than anything, but it's getting harder to get around her without my feelings getting in the way. Do I tell her now, and, and do I tell do I tell her how I feel and risk losing her, or do I keep my feelings to myself and suffer in silence? Here's the deal. You love your friend. I will tell you this. What do you value the most? If you value the idea of, of, a, of a possible relationship being there, then go for it. Or if you love the idea of having a friendship, uh, a lasting friendship forever, then keep it bottled up. Because I can tell you, many relationships get, many friendships get ruined 
because people think that they should cross that line and then that ruins their relate that relationship and they, they just can't recover from it. I mean, it, it's like, it, it sucks that you have, you would have to actually suffer in silence, but the reality is it'll be okay. <laughs> if you don't want to lose a friend, okay, I'll, I'll say it this way. And this is a true statistic. Men, um, straight couples, the chance of divorce is high. It's not as high as mo- as normal. I can't remember the percentage. I could probably look it up. Let me look this up. Actually, that'd be better. To, let's look at the the uh, divorce things. I know this statistic is actually pretty high, so here we go. Um, is that it? That's not it. The um, all I know it it, it it does bring in a lot of money. We we and we need to stop giving lawyers money for taking care of things that they shouldn't have to take care of, because lawyers can do whatever. So lesbian marriages uh, are tip- typically divorce. The percentage of divorce is seventy percent, where um, the typical heterosexual relationship is around fifty percent, where a uh, two men married is about thirty percent. Now this was on just a statistic that I just found on Cora. Nope, here's another one. Yeah, no, that's the same thing. So the reality is this. I'm not I'm not saying that women are hard to get along with. But and I'm not saying that men are easier to get along with. That's why their their marriages last longer. But if you value your your friendship way more than you do the opportunity to try to try to change it to go to somewhere else, then I will say value the friendship. Bottle that stuff up. And go that route. Honestly, I would. If you have a, such a good friendship, keep it as a friendship. And I'm not telling you not to get involved. I'm just telling you, what is the what is worth more to you in the long run? Because I would rather have one badass friend standing behind me, no matter what, than having someone uh, having a chance of not having that person there for me. That's where I would stand. So. And I, I, that may sound ridiculous. That may sound uh, hard to do. May sound like something that you don't want to do. But you asked my opinion, so there's my opinion. So, all right, let's jump into some hate mail because uh, you know what, people got to be hating on me sometimes. I guess. See what how many we got. There's a few. There's about five or six of them. I won't read all five or six. I'll read just a few of them. Um, <laughs> the subject of this one is your advice is trash, Devin. Not even a hey, Devin. This is just straight out Devin. Devin, I don't know why people write in for your advice when everything you say is completely useless. I followed one of your suggestions about improving my morning routine, and guess what? Nothing changed. You act like you have all the answers, but your advice does does your but your advice does absolutely nothing for real people. Maybe you should stop pretending to be an expert. Yeah, maybe you should you should stop pretending to be an expert. Regards, don't even give me a real name. Actually, <laughs> so here's the thing. I've never said I was I was great at giving advice. I'm just a dad that can give dad advice. That's all. I, my my advice is dad advice. You take it or you leave it. I don't give a crap. You can be mad at me all you want. You can say I, my advice never changed your uh, your um your your how your life goes. That's on you. I'm not in charge of you. 
<laughs> it's it, this is you know it, I kind of find it comical that people get so hateful over something so little. If you ask my opinion, it's just an opinion. It's not not something that that's uh, that's set in stone. I can probably I probably give very bad advice. Apparently, according to you, I do give bad advice. <laughs> And I'm going to say, thank you for letting me know. I appreciate it. Doesn't change my mind. I mean, my my job in general is to tell people what I think they should do. There you go. Whether they want to listen to me or not, that's up to them. They, You, you are still an individual. You're still a person who, who can make up your own mind and you can do the things that you know that you should do. I am not your, I, I do not control your life. I just say things that pop in my head that sound good. And if it's something that I would tell my kids, then it's, it's it can be good advice. If it's something that I wouldn't tell my kids, then it's not good advice. So be angry at me all you want, but we all know where the, where the problem really lies. If your life is not changing, it's not because I gave you bad advice. It's, it's because you probably lack the ability to follow through with your with my advice that I gave you. Or you didn't implement it in the right way. And even 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 though if even my advice was horrible, you still chose to to do it. You made the choice. So who's at fault here? It's not me. It's actually you. You're the one at fault. So be be disappointed. Perfectly fine. Doesn't bother me. I'm sorry that your life is so bad that you feel like that you have to take it out on me. Um, and I feel I feel bad for you because you still made a choice. I guarantee I didn't tell you to do anything that was hard. I don't know. Ooh, here's a long one. Let's see if we can get through this long one. This one says, Hey, Devin. I've been dealing with mental health uh, challenges for years. Therapy, medication, the whole nine yards. It hasn't been easy, and I know firsthand how crucial it is to get help from real professionals. Uh Oh, here's where this was going. uh, Who are trained to handle serious problems. When I hear people like you giving advice on your podcast as if you're some kind of therapist, it honestly makes me uncomfortable. I stumbled across your show a few months ago when I was looking for something lighthearted to take my mind off of things. At first, I thought this thought it was fun. But then I started noticing how often you dive into people's issues like you're qualified to help them. Maybe... Hold on. Where did I leave this place? Maybe you think you're being helpful but it's dangerous to offer guidance on complex emotional and mental issues when you don't have the the credentials. I'm not saying you have bad, bad intentions, but real issues require real situations from professionals, not someone who thinks they know it all just because they have a platform. People could be misled by your, by your advice, thinking it's the same as what they'd get from a licensed therapist. And that can be damaging. Do everyone a favor. Stop pretending to do something you're not. Stick to the the fun stuff and leave the heavy lifting to the pros. Thanks, someone who cares. (laughs) I have never once, ever, said I was a licensed therapist. Never have done that. I've always said, guess what? I'm a dad and I'll give you some advice. If people want to tell me their problems, I'll tell them what I think. If you have some major mental issues, I can probably refer you to to some uh, therapist that would that could handle that type of stuff. I've never once said I was a therapist, so not sure where you're getting that. You're probably off your meds, and yep, I went there and I said that you you probably got off your meds, and because you're off your meds, you're probably you're you got to find someone to lash out at, and I just happen to be the flavor of the day. So guess what? I don't care. I'm sorry that you feel that way. I love that you decide that you felt uh, 
uh, you needed to email me. I thank you for that one. <laughs> thank you for listening to the podcast. There's that. I appreciate that too. Because honestly, I it, it's always nice to have people who uh, who will listen and uh, just want to have fun and talk about things. I mean, it, 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 talk is talk. Talk is therapeutic. Now, I'm not a therapist, but honestly, you ask me a question, I'll give you my thoughts. You tell me your thoughts. We can go back and forth. And if it can take you, pull you off the, the ledge for a second, that's what needed to happen. But don't tell me I'm damaging people when I'm when I know I'm not. And no, that's not pride kicking in. That's just me saying, you know what? If you got a question and you want me to answer, I'd be glad to answer it. I mean, how many times do you go into public and you just at small talk and you ask people in, in small talk uh, questions and then they give you their advice? Are they therapists? If they're not therapists, then you should be talking to them. Then essentially, based off of your um, your your uh, theory here. No one should talk to anyone unless they're licensed for it. Again, I've never said I was a licensed therapist. Never once. Not in my bio, not anywhere else. I'm just a person who can give advice. Yeah, you're right. Well, <laughs> Joe uh, says, not like you're charging for it, and they ask you for the advice. Yeah, that's literally what it is. They, I'm doing this for free. People jump on here and ask me a question, and I will answer the question. I get emails like crazy. My email box is probably up to 200 still. It just, I take some of them off, I drop them on this one thing, and I get delete them and go more, and it just keeps filling up. Now, I know some of these things, which this one could I, I, this one could be total BS, I don't know, or they just decide to uh, you know, lash out. I don't care. Um, it gives me something amusing to read. It doesn't make me upset. It takes a lot to make me upset. But it's funny when I see, when, when if you're going to try to put me in my place, when honestly, the way, you, the way this email reads, I can promise you you're probably way off your meds so my advice as a non-therapist is to go get back on your meds and guess what you'll feel better and then send me another email tell me how it goes tell me if i can help you with any of that because honestly i'll be glad to give you some more bad advice <laughs> so mrs uh, thanks someone who cares I hope someone does care. Thank you. Let's see what else we got. Man, I didn't realize I have this many hate ones. Ooh, this one was titled Ego Problem. Okay, here we go. Let's do this one. <sighs> hey, Devin. You act like you have all the answers. I do. But honestly, you come across as arrogant. Do I really? Do I come across as arrogant? Just because you've got a podcast doesn't mean you're better or smarter than anyone else. Maybe you should tone down the ego and realize you don't know everything about people's lives. You are 100%. You, you hit the nail on the head right there. I don't know everything about everyone's life. I do know situational issues that I've gone through in my life, and I can tell you everything that I've done to, on how I do that. And whether that's good advice for you, Cool. If it's not good advice for you, don't follow it. I'm, I'm not forcing anyone to take my advice and run with it. I'm just telling people how I feel about their, about their problem. And, you know, honestly, some of you guys got some pretty big problems. <laughs> some of you guys have some, uh, some fetishes that I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> I mean, give me a break. So yes, be angry. You know, if it, if it makes you feel better to be angry at me and you think I have an ego problem, things like that, be angry. If that makes you, if that puts you where you need to be in your life, I will take blame for it 100%. And that is okay. You can be angry at me all you want. But don't come to me and try to tell me I need to just move on when honestly, I do this for fun. I do this because I like people. I really do. There's not a person that I, I, I have very few enemies in my life. Well, apparently I have a few of them, but. <laughs> okay. That's kind of funny too, that you say that, uh, Joe, because like, oh, here's the thing. Um, Joe says we're, we're renaming tonight's show to damn it, Devin. <laughs> the reason that's funny, that's funny in two ways. One, yes, it applies to this. 
two, when I was filming that TV show on our time when we were not filming, um, we would play games and things like that. And we would play, uh, we played Jenga. We played Jenga one day for like eight hours. I don't know why we did it. or I know why we did it because it was, we were bored and we had nothing going on. And so I'd always get to the point where I could get the, the Jenga, um, you know, the, we call it the little block out. And the guy who's after beside me, he go, damn it, Devin, because it made it where he would sway more for him. So, yeah. So that, that means more, a lot more to me than anything else. I, I honestly should, should make some t-shirts that says, damn it, Devin. <laughs> Actually, I think I will. I need to go, go see if I can find a good font and create a couple of them and, and get that done. Make some t-shirts that says, damn it, Devin. Maybe we should, maybe I should change that. So what I need to do is do is like at least one day a week, I'll read nothing but hate mail. I don't know if I get, I don't know if I get that much. I mean, there's a lot of emails. I should, I should probably go through them and, and read them all. And take thing is the preparation. Here's the thing. The preparation for what I do takes some time because I do No, I don't read them all fully before I get to them. I, I'll skim over them and kind of get a, a, an idea. And I, I, I do try to group them together based off of what they are. Um, the hate ones were kind of stuck out to me today. So I'm like, okay, let me see if I can find some more hate ones. Um, so I would, you know, look at the subject of the email or whatever, or, or the text message they send me or whatever, however they did that people decide to message me. So I, I'd do it that way. But yeah, I, I, I I'm going to make me a t-shirt that says, damn it, Devin, by the way. So thank you. That, rem- that, re- that actually reminded me of, of what I, when I said I was going to do that back when I was doing the, the when I, we're filming that TV show. So anyway, um, do I want, there's a few more. I could do a few more if I, if I guess I could. Let's do some, see what other people have to say. Um, hey, Devin, I've been stuck in the same dead end job for five years. And every time I try to figure out how to make a change, I end up more frustrated. I listen to, I listen to every advice podcast out there, hoping to, for some kind of breakthrough or clarity. A friend recommended your show. Oh, thank you, friend. Thank you for recommending my show. Um, and at first, I thought I might finally, it, this. It, it, I thought it might finally be the one to give me fresh something fresh. But episode after episode, I hear the same old tired advice. Start a morning. Start a morning routine. Think positive. Set goals. Don't get me wrong. I get the importance of all of that, but I'm not looking for the cookie cutter situation. So cookie cutter solution. I need something new, something that actually speaks to where I am in life. You might as well be reading from a self-help book written 50 years ago. Why not try one? Why, why not try being more original for once? I'm sure you've got it. You've got You've got, I'm sure you've got it in you. Best regards, underwhelmed fan. Well, okay, here's the deal. I thank your friend for suggesting my podcast. I appreciate it. That's awesome. <laughs> my advice isn't bad, though. If it's 50 year old advice, it's 50 year old advice that's lasted, that stood the test of time. So think about that. There are some things that do last and are good to be going for a while. And it's good that you do that, you know, write in a journal. You know, I've told people to do that. I told, you know, I, I, you know, set a morning routine. You know what the best morning routine a person could ever do? Get out of bed, make your bed first thing. You're probably not doing that. And then eat a good breakfast and get out and get to work. Seriously. If you don't do that, you're, you'll get stuck in that rut. So I don't know what kind of a rut that you're in and why you're in such a rut, but honestly, that's kind of on you. It's not on me. You wanting something new and magical, create it yourself. Seriously. You, if you feel like that my advice is that bad, if you're tired of setting goals and tired of thinking positive, I tell you, that's probably the problem here the most. You're not thinking positive. The fact that you would reach out and email me how much, how big of a loser I am because I give such outdated advice. That tells me everything I need to know. You're, you're looking at this whole life in totally the wrong direction. You have, you, so your problem is you'll never improve because you don't care to. You want to blame other people for your own problems. 
You have created the problem. And you know, that, it's funny. When people think negatively all the time, it does something. It literally changes your brain. It changes how your brain works. It changes how it functions because you think about things in such a negative light. You don't know how to find happiness. And honestly, everybody needs happiness. Everybody deserves happiness. You deserve happiness. I wish you had the most happiness you could ever get. And maybe my advice doesn't work for you. But you got to find something. I mean, you, you've listened to podcasts, a, a ton of podcasts, apparently. You've, if you've, it sounds like you've read self-help books. There's, honestly, there's something in, in anything, that everything that people are saying that has to work. Because honestly, your, pro, your situation is, is not any more special than anyone else's and the crap that they're going through. Your situation is your fault from your problems that you are not willing to deal with. That's, I'm guaranteeing that's what that's coming down to. You're, you're sitting where you don't want to deal with something, and so you just keep, you're, you're a procrastinator. I wonder how long it took you to decide to write, write this email to me. Did you do it immediately? Or did you think about it for a few days? Until you were just so overwhelmed and I said something in, in one of a previous episode that you're like, you know what, screw this. I'm going to write him and tell him off. I hope you feel better. And to, and to be honest, I'm not going to stop. Because what I'm doing, it's fun. I enjoy it. It's a way to relax. It's a way to say, you know what? It's going to be okay. This is therapy. You know, is it my therapy? Sure. It gets a way for me to get words out of my head and get it out into, I would say on paper, but it's not paper. I get it out there onto uh, the, the into the world and to the interwebs and people listen. And they whether, whether people listen or not, I actually do this for me. I'm going to be selfish here. I do this for me because I enjoy it. It helps my brain slow down. It helps me to not worry about the things that. So my, my, if you don't know who I am, which most people don't, my brain works a hundred miles an hour. It is running all the time and it may be called the ADHD, whatever you want to call it. I don't care. Um, and so what, when I, when, when I'm given a problem and I'm able to help try to solve it for somebody, it helps slow things down on the other side. So while I'm working on this problem over here, this problem over here is going, okay, now I can relax a little bit. So yes, I'm going to be selfish. This is about me. <laughs> there's, I guess there's the ego part, I guess, that the other other person was uh, having a problem with. But uh, you know, if I can give any advice that comes out and people can uh, listen and makes them makes their lives better, then guess what? That's a win. Just because it didn't work for you, doesn't mean it doesn't work. It just means that you couldn't figure out how to impl implement it to make it work for you. That's the reality. And I'm sorry that you, you, uh, you're been stuck in the, you know, your dead end job for five years, but it'll be okay. Joe says, I'm the same way, brother. Maybe that's uh, why we get along so well. You know, the thing is it, you're, you're probably right. The thing is, I get along with everybody. I like people, and you, I, I know you do too. And it's just one of those things that when, you're, when your head runs so fast all the time, you have to give your, your, your brain something to work on. It's, it's so I, I go to sleep at night, and I go to sleep, and I sleep like a baby. It's because I'm being able to, you know, here I am technically. This is, I'm doing this in the sleeping hours where most people should probably be asleep. Probably you should be asleep too. I don't know. I don't know your schedule, <laughs> but thank you for watching. But the thing is, if if people get, uh, for me and people who are like me and you, if we can uh, learn, how, if, and this is how if this is how we've learned to settle that brain, then it works. You know, I watched this video actually a little rabbit hole of a, of a conspiracy theory. It's the ashwagandha conspiracy theory. Apparently, that stuff helps you out a lot. I don't know. I may read more and see what if there, what if there's any, any bad side effects or it just to see what it does. But I don't know. There's that. Apparently, we're not supposed to talk about ashwagandha, but according to social media right now, it's uh, someone you know people are. It's it's a bad thing. So yeah, there you go. There's a squirrel moment for me. But yeah, so I'm sorry, uh, Mister Underworld fan. You'll be all right. Don't listen to my advice. 
move on, be happy because that's what you deserve. You deserve happiness. I'm not angry at you. You had to lash out and be angry at somebody. It might as well be me versus you taking it out on your family members or wife or kid or whatever. So be angry at me. Leave, let your family be awesome. So, all right, one more hate mail. Then I'll go back to the other stuff. I'll do more hate mail later. We'll just do one more though. Um, hey, Devin, who gave you, who, who gave you the right to give advice to anyone? What are your qualifications? Everybody wants qualifications. Do you have a degree in psychology or counseling? Or are you just another random person with the microphone acting like some kind of life coach? It's dangerous for people to follow advice from someone with no real credentials. You're right. You want my credentials? I can tell you my credentials. My credentials are very simple. My credentials are I've been raising kids for 23 years. I've been around, I've been alive for 46 years. I have seen some crap. I'm actually Generation X. I'm the, I'm the generation that, that are, are I'm, I'm part of the generation that um, it took actors and movies, st- you know, movie stars and singers to make it create a commercial on television. If you don't believe me, go look this up. But there was a, <laughs> they had to create a commercial in a, for television that said, hey, it's 8 o'clock. Do you know where your kids are? I'm of that generation. I'm of that generation where we were feral kids, where we did whatever we wanted. We went around. We, we had fun. We talked to people. We did nice things. We did bad things. We did all of that. Those are my qualifications. So if you're, if I don't know what generation you are, I, the fact that you're emailing me and you're asking me about all my qualifications and, you're, and you signed it concerned citizen, I'm probably going to say you're at least a millennial, but I'm going to probably I'm actually going to say you're Gen Z, and you get your feelings hurt a little bit too much. What you need is someone like me that is going to tell you how it is. That's my qualifications. School of Hard Knocks, LOL. Dang straight it was, and you know what? I would have it. I'm glad. I used to think I was born in the wrong generation. Because I love old music, I love all that stuff. I love, you know, um, swing. I love all that stuff. I should. I always said I should have been at least born in the fifties. But I think everybody kind of feels that same way. But the reality is simple. I was in the. I was born in the right generation. I was born when I was supposed to be born. I came to this earth. I've. I, I've done the things I've done. I've done good things. I've done bad things, and it's been a freaking amazing deal. I'm forty six years old, and I've done some epic things. So if and if you can't recognize that and you're and you're offended by me because of this, then guess what? I'm not the one with the problem. It's you. You got the problem. If you were offended by anything, you see here's here's the thing. This is the thing that no one wants to tell you that because a lot of, a lot of your a lot of these generations out there have been coddled too much. The thing is. You need to be told straight. I was raised to, that you tell the truth no matter what, even if it hurts you, right? And that meant, in some cases, when I say going to hurt you, that meant my parents were going to get the, the have, send me outside to grab a uh, switch, a stick from a tree, like a little skin, and they, so they can, um, you know, discipline me with the thing. Some people would call that child abuse. I called it reality because it turned me into the person I am, and I'm not better. I love people. And I think people are amazing. And I can talk to people about any subject there is, whether I know something about it or nothing about it, I'm willing to listen and I'm willing to learn. So, you know, when it comes to being in, 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 uh, in a generation where you get offended so much, that's a choice. This is the thing that no one tells you. Being offended is a choice. You choose to be upset. You choose to be mad or you choose to lash out and send me an email saying you're a concerned citizen because I don't have credentials to give people advice. I'm a freaking father. I've got five kids. I've been married for 23 years. I know how to keep a marriage together. How's your life going? Be angry at me. It's fine. I don't care. Your anger is all on you. And it doesn't hurt me one bit. So there's my credentials. And honestly, I'm going to say it. I love you. And I'm very grateful that you felt the need to email me. The fact that you're listening, the fact that you're watching, 
the fact that you go back and you're and you're going through my my uh, ca- catalog of of content that I've put out there. Thank you, seriously, because you're doing what you're doing two things for me. You're one, you're you're you know you're adding more, giving me more reason to keep doing this, and two, you're making me money. You are adding money so I can take care of my family. I I saw this thing the uh, today. It was a pretty amazing video, and so it was all about this guy on TikTok. He makes um, he didn't say how much he made. Now that that's the thing, he didn't say how much he made. Now there's a from my understanding, um, each star they, like I guess stars or whatever it is on the on people can give you on the TikTok. Each one is worth like half a cent, half a penny. This guy he did three his the best month he's ever had was three point five million uh, stars. Now. That equals, based off of the math, that equals to like seventeen thousand dollars a month. That is amazing, and all it all it is is just by going live, by talking to people and answering questions, having people jump on the lives with him and and discuss things. I mean, I, I'm going to go. Actually, I, I got his stuff saved. I haven't gone and seen seen some of and seen some of what he does, but I think that's cool. You know, I think there needs to be more people out there. I think he may be a gamer, to be honest. So if he if he's a guy that plays games, dude, that's epic. Play keep playing the games, keep feeding your family from with all those stars. You know me, I just I just you know I t- I turn all this content into more content, which gives me advertising, and I get money off the advertising. I get some some sponsors, um, and then I get invited to go on to some TV shows. So that's my money. That's how I make my money. So yeah. But the fact that you go, that you're willing to go listen and tell me I'm not, a, and I'm definitely not an expert. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, no more hate. I'm done with hate. You know, well, I'll save some more. Maybe I'll do. Uh, maybe I'll mix it up. I'll get a few more tomorrow. I don't know. I don't know how many more. I need. I need to go. I have to finish go filtering through my emails because there's a lot of them in there that I need to go through. But yeah. All right, let's get to something that's real. We got what about I can do this for about thirty more minutes, about six, seven more maybe, and then I, I'll start editing things. All right. Um, hey Devin, I've been single for a while, and my friend keeps telling me I'm too picky. You probably are. When it comes to when when it comes to dating, sorry. I have I have standards, sure, but that doesn't uh, that doesn't mean I should settle, right? The thing is, the thing is, now I'm wondering if they're right, and I'm sabotaging myself by waiting for the perfect person. How do I know I'm being uh, re- being reasonable? How do I know if I'm being reasonable or if I'm settling uh, if I'm setting the bar too high? Here's the deal: there is nothing wrong with having standards. When it comes to ha- when it when it comes to having a relationship some, with somebody, especially if it's someone you, you're going to be married to, in for a very very long time, now I believe if you're going to get married, you marry the person and you work it out no matter what. You you do your best to uh, to make your marriage the best it could ever be, and that means you put in the work, and that means you're, you're you, that divorce is not on the on the 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 uh, um, docket whatsoever unless there's abuse. Now if there's abuse. Dump the bastard. Simple as that. <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with having high standards. High standards is what helps a person be able to get what they want in life. It helps them to make the, all the money they need. It helps them on everything. Now, can you? is there such a thing as too high a standards? Possibly. I don't know that, that answer. But I will say the right person will come around for you. If you're, if you're willing to find the right person, that doesn't mean you have to lower your standards. It just means that when the right person comes around and it's a good fit for you, you will know. And because you know, then that'll, it'll just match up correctly. Now, one thing that people, the problem that most people do who say they have high standards when it comes to dating and things like that, once they start dating someone and they, they like, well, I kind of like this person, but they always throw that, but you have to remember you are two separate people. And I and I guarantee you would not want to marry or date someone that you're like. You are a different person. You are someone that that should be your own way, and it should be simple as that. 
Now, you can if you wanted to marry yourself, you would probably be very, very miserable. That's why they say opposites attract. It's true. So, when you get into a relationship, do not start picking that a person apart unless they're just a bad person, right? You'll know, you'll know from the beginning. You'll you'll know that they're a bad person by the way how they why how they act, how they treat people. You know what kind of tipper they are. Honestly, that is actually a good tell. Um, what how they how they um, if they treat people with respect, all that stuff. What's going on, my friend? Um, it's Devin. But yeah, you know, it, it's 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 not it's the thing is, you can you're having high standards will help give you the relationship that you want, but again, don't pick them apart. Let them be who they are. That simple. If they're not bankrupting you, if they're not uh, making your life miserable, if they add to your value then that will help you be that much better. If they lift you up, if they make you a better person, and you do the same for them. The, the key thing to having a relationship, a good relationship, is you both work and help build each other up. You're putting in 100%, and they're putting 100%. So 100 plus 100 is 200, but in marriage math, that is 100. Because what happens is if you're pulling, if you, there, there are some days, and you can talk to my wife, there are some days that I'm doing 50 60%. And then what she does, she compensates with that to keep it where we need to be. And then I do the same thing for her. It, it, it's just how you take care of each other. So, yes. Do you have high standards? Probably. But there's nothing wrong with that. And I promise you, if you, when the right person comes along, you'll know exactly who it is when it happens. Simple as that. So, don't be, stop being stressed about it. It'll be okay. So, there you go. Forget your friends. They don't, they don't know what they're talking about. All right. Hey, Devin. My partner is great. Here comes the butt. But recently, I found out that they've, they've been lying about the number of past relationships they've had. It's not the number itself that bothers me, but it's the fact that they lied about it. Now I'm questioning what else they might have hidden. How do I confront them without sounding accuser, accusatory? And how do I rebuild trust if it's broken? How, okay, here. They probably didn't tell you the number of uh, people they've uh, they've been in a relationship or, or whatever with because they didn't want to hurt your feelings. You know, I, I, I see these videos online a lot, and it's like, okay, does body count actually matter? Yeah, it does, actually. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. Your body count does matter. And, and and you're you're proving it too. You you literally you're proving that that does matter. Now your part is you have to understand they probably didn't tell you the exact number because they were trying to spare you. And one they may be embarrassed by it too. That's the other thing. So why would we want to you know make them feel bad when they're when they're having an issue? I don't think there's tr broken trust here unless they're lying to you about other stuff, then that's a problem. But if you're, if the, if the only issue that you guys have is the fact that the, that their relationship number is higher than what they told you, what's it matter? Are they with you? If they're with you, then get over it. They're not with these other people. Are they texting other people? Then that's a problem. But if they're not, they're with you. So you have to get over it. This is a you problem. This is not a them problem. And honestly, if you brought it up to me, if, it, if this was me, if, it, if I was the one that had a higher number of relationships and, and you asked me about it, I'd probably be upset. The fact that you wouldn't, and especially if you're saying that you don't, that you're losing trust with them. You're literally setting yourself up to have a horrible relationship that's going to fall apart. Now, it doesn't say if, whether you guys are married or not. It sounds like you're just dating. So if it bothers you that bad, move on. Find you somebody else. But I'm going to tell you, you're still you're going to have the same problem with them as you have with the, your current uh, relationship because you're not willing to let go of some stuff. Simple as that. Hey, Devin. 
I just wanted to share, share some good news. After years of procrastinating, I finally finished my novel. It's been such a long journey of late night writing sessions and tons of self-doubt, but I did it. Now it comes to the scary part, actually letting people read it. Do you have any advice on how to handle the fear of rejection? Or should I just be proud that I made it, it, made it this far? <laughs> Congratulations on finishing your novel, for one. That's something that is pretty amazing. I've actually had one. I wrote one book years ago, and it would get in my car. And I was writing. I'd, I'd go to the park and write in the write in the park about it, and you know, write the book in the park. And then I'd go get something. I, went, I remember when, then I went to the gro- grocery store get some groceries. I locked my computer in the car. Someone broke in the car, stole my laptop, and that book got gone, disappeared. So that book no longer exists. So I mean, I have probably half of it up here, but. It would be hard to to rewrite it, so I didn't rewrite that one. I do have another one I'm actually working on, um, but it's more of just a, I guess a, a project, a, pa- a passion, a passion, uh, a passion project, just something that um, helps keep my mind uh, from going crazy. So there's that. So for the so, but for the fact that you finished a novel, that's amazing. Seriously, that is freaking epic. And all I'm going to say is send me a link to where I can purchase it so I will g- help give you some money and make and give me something good to read. So whether I like it or not, that's another story. But just, if it depends on what it falls into. Now, it may be a uh, watch it. <laughs> it turns out you you, you write uh, romance novels. I'll still buy it just to help, help you out. But on the other side, that's not my thing. But as far as getting over the how to handle fear of rejection, fear of rejection is there. It's always going to be there. You just work through rejection. Reject rejection's not bad. If you're if you're worried about rejection, then it's going to you, it'll probably never ever get published. What you got to do is learn to deal with it. I mean, we do, we we. I just read you some emails from people that hate me. Is that rejection? Yes, it is. Does it bother me? No, it doesn't. And part of the fear of getting over the fear of rejection is just coming to terms with who, what type of person you are. And if you, if you think your work is good, then run with it. It will be good. And if no one else likes it, you know, you, I, I can't, I, how many times I, that's, I do know, I, did, I used to know this. I can't remember exactly. Let's find this out. How many times? How many? All right, here we go. All right, so J.K. Rowling's. Everybody know who that is? That is uh, Miss Harry Potter herself. Um, her book was rejected uh, by none less than 12 publishers. So 12 publishers rejected Harry Potter. Let that sink in. 12 different publishers says, nope, this ain't good enough. But she still persisted, and it still happened. And now it's a, what, a billion-dollar industry at this point? So my advice is this. Keep on keeping on. Don't let it bother you. Don't let it, uh, don't let things, don't let, again, don't let the bastard dry, uh, grind you down because the reality is it will be okay. Let people reject you, and they can keep going. Let them reject you more and keep going. And honestly, you should be insanely proud of what you achieved too. That's the other thing. You should be 100% insanely proud of the fact that what you've done because you've done something that most people cannot do or not willing to do. You finished something. So that's my advice. Hey, Devin. I've been dreaming about it for years and finally did it. I quit my corporate job and started my own business. It's a little coffee shop, and while it's been exciting, it's also Way harder than I expected. I didn't realize how overwhelmed the financial side would be. Any advice on a new on a newbie entrepreneur trying to stay afloat in a competitive market? First of all, I'm going to tell you this: you have jumped into a market that is very difficult. With when you got all the Dutch brothers and all the 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 uh, um, you know um, Starbucks out there that you're competing with. Now, what what your niche though is the fact that you are a privately owned 
business. If you have the right location, then people will flock to you and they're going to, they're, you're going to make so much money. It's, it's going to be insane. Now the financial side is going to be hard because you have to pay the rent. You got to buy, make sure you have all the right supplies. You got to, you got payroll, you got everything. Most likely there will be a couple of months, if not more than a couple where you will break even or go into the negative because you're trying to build a business. But if you do it right, you get the right people to come in. You get the right people who are willing to talk about you on their social media. You will grow. So I think it's awesome. I think anyone that goes in and they, uh, and they uh, get rid of their corporate job, I am a firm believer in getting rid of those corporate jobs because corporate jobs just suck the life out of you and you know, don't know where to, how to function or even to go. So I'm going to say congratulations again because that is freaking amazing. As far as the, fin- the financial part, again, you need to find people who are smarter than you are that can give you good financial advice that will help your business thrive. Find yourself a, a business manager or find yourself a good accountant that is willing to help you as needed. That's what you need to do. But how amazing is that? You quit your job and you're you're making you're you are building your life how you want your life to run. That is so awesome. I'm I'm, I'm envious. I think that seriously, I, I love hearing stuff like that. That is awesome. Hey Devin, I graduated with my master's degree. How amazing is that? Congratulations, and couldn't be more proud of myself. And you should be proud of yourself. I'm. I'm the first of my family to go to grad school, and while it was tough, I made it through. Now comes the next challenge, big challenge, finding a job. I'm nervous about stepping into the real world, especially with student loans looming. Any words of wisdom for new graduates looking to navigate adulthood? Just keep doing it. Look what you did. You, you've got a master's degree. I don't know what it's in, but you have a master's degree, and... You spent all that time in college. You've done some amazing things. You're further ahead than I am. I never, I never went to college, but I'm going to tell you, work hard, perform well, and don't feel bad when it, when it comes time to change positions or change companies because you deserve the best. You know, You've got debt looming over your, your head from the school student loans, which is sucky. Which I, Oh, here's the thing. I think education is so important, but I am not a believer in going into debt. So that being said, how does a person go through college and not go into debt? Well, yeah, you write a lot of essays. You look for scholarships and you look for grants and all that stuff like crazy. My do- my oldest daughter, I'm so super proud of her because the fact that she's gone to college so far and that she where she's had to invest very little of her own money into it that she can actually she when she well she just graduated with her with her bachelor's and she's going to graduate with her master's in, in this in December and she'll have no debt zero how awesome is that so I don't know how much debt you've gotten yourself into. But I will tell you, pay it off as fast as possible without hurting your finances, but also make sure you invest wisely so when you're my age, you'll have millions of money dollars to set aside. I do not have millions of dollars set aside. I've made some stupid mistakes in my life. But there's that. But yes, it, schooling is important. It just depends on what you want to go into and what type of work you're going to do. And I will t- I've told my kids to do more, more uh, two different types of things. Go to college if you need to go, if you want to be a doctor, got to go to college, do that thing. But if you don't want to do that, go to trade school. Trade school's fine. Nothing wrong with that. My, I got my oldest son. He's super successful. He's going to college part-time right now. But he works for a, a company where he travels and he, he does these cool events. And guess what? He does well. So why not, right? Talking for a couple hours is a uh, gets to the voice a little bit. So congratulations on getting your master's degree, by the way. That's awesome. Dear Devin, dear Devin, I kind of like the dear Devin, but I take I like the hey Devins better. But 
Dear Devin, I don't I don't have a question. Just wanted to share some good news. I finally left a toxic relationship. It was the hardest decision I ever made. But I feel like I can finally breathe again. I'm focusing on myself for the first time in years, and I feel incredible. Thank you for your past advice. I really it it really helped me find the courage to put myself first. Okay, so I think I know who this person is. Um they still they put the uh the same name, they, it's not the real name, but they put their same name as they did in the uh, the pr- a previous email. So if this is the same person, which I believe it is, I am so happy that you got out of that relationship. Because the reality is, if someone's not treating you the right way, and they're trying to, okay, I'll let, let me backtrack. This same person sent an, a t- an email um, in the past, and this email in the past was saying that they were she w- they were struggling with their relationship. Their partner, their um, they, they were dating, I guess. If I'm, hold on, let me see if I can find it. Um, we got to back here. Yeah. So here's the here was the first re- first email. Hey Devin. My partner told me they were, they've always wanted to try a polyamorous relationship, but I'm not really sure I'm comfortable with that. I don't want to lose them, but I also don't know if I can handle the idea of sharing them with someone else. How do I even um, start this conversation? So if this is the same person, which I truly believe it is, then they did the right thing. because And I said this in, to them before, that that relationship... If they want to start a polyamorous relationship, that means there was someone there in, in the beginning already. That means that there was already something going on. And what they wanted to do was just try to pull. They didn't want to split the relationship up. They wanted to do have the best of both worlds, which is having two two people. Good night, bud. Love you. So they um they they, they so you did the right thing, and you and you did what I when what 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 I pretty much predicted anyone that wants to pull a second person into a a third person should I say a third will into a relationship you are setting your relationship up to failure that's the reality do not ever bring a third person into your relationship even if it's family and not not, I'm not talking about in the bedroom I'm just talking about in general if you and your husband you and your wife you and whatever have a relationship that relationship is between you two do not ever talk bad about that person behind their back you talk if you have a problem with them you talk to them only you don't go vent to your parents you don't go vent to your best friends because you vent to your best friends your best friends are going to tell you you know what you you don't deserve it he doesn't deserve you or she doesn't deserve you move on they're going to give you bad advice now what you did though if it's the same person if you are the same person he was probably cheating, and I'm sorry for that. But the fact that you got you made the hard decision and you got out of a, a of a toxic relationship, which that's what that was, that is amazing. You did the right thing. You are free now, and you can actually move on with your life and get someone who's actually going to treat you the way that you should be treated. You deserve to be treated with respect. Everybody does. If you're in a relationship right now and they don't treat you with respect, you need to get out of it. Your standard needs to be up here, and they need to come equal to your, your to your standard. That's what they get. That's what you got to do. This is not a. This is about you. Simple as that. And when and th- in their relationship, it is about them. And then you guys are supposed to work together to make it about both of you guys. Do not ever get yourself in a bad situation with a bad person who doesn't care or love about, love you. That's the bottom line. So I'm I'm super happy that you moved on. Happy that you got out of that toxic relationship and you're happier. Seriously. You deserve to put yourself first and you need to find someone that and you deserve to have someone who who will come to you and find you and give you the respect and give you the the the, the happiness that you deserve. And and by do, by them giving you the happiness that you deserve, I'm very confident that you're going to give them the happiness that they deserve. Is definitely a uh, a two way street here.
All right. Hey, Devin. I've been sober for six months now, and it's been the most challenging yet rewarding time of my life. I feel I feel clearer, cleaner, clear. clear. Oh, I feel clearer, more focused, and more in control. But I'm also dealing with the reality of how much I used I used alcohol to cope with stress. Now that that now it's not an op, now that it's not an option, I'm learning to face things head on. Any advice on how to stay strong during tough times without falling back into old habits? Congratulations on being sober for six months. Because I can tell you what, I know that, um, I don't know because I've never drank, I can tell you that. But I would I have friends that have drank and it's ruined their lives. And I, and I, I know how it's messed up their lives and, and the way that, that their lives should have been to versus what it is. So I can tell you congratulations because that is something that should be celebrated. As far as dealing with stress, even you know, so in, so you're not falling back into the same habits. Keep being tough. Tell yourself, and this is true. Tell yourself you are worth it, and no matter how hard things are, you will make it through. That's really the only thing I can tell you. Because if you feel, if you see how much clearer your brain is, you have more focus. You're not, and because you, when you were drinking, I guarantee you didn't know how you were acting, and because of that, you, you're you you were probably making a fool of yourself. So now that you have more better focus and you know what's going on, you will you're a better person for it. So keep fighting the 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 good fight. Keep being sober. Keep being strong. You'll be okay. If you ever need a, uh, someone to talk to, you get there. You can email me. You can jump on the live. We, I'm glad to talk. If you need, a, if you ever get up on that on that ledge and you need a little bit of help, I'm here. I'm sure you've got a great um, group of people that are around you that will are willing to be your help too. You've you've got you obviously got a good support system because you've gone six months. So that is important. You'll be fine. Trust me. You're going to be good. You'll be fine. Hey, Devin, I don't have a question, just just a thank you. Your advice helped me through a tough, uh, a, your advice helped me through a tough breakup last year. And now I'm in a much better place. I've learned to love myself, set boundaries, and focus on things that make me happy. I'm quite where I want to be. But I'm, but I'm, a, I am a lot closer than I was. I'm oh, I'm not quite where I where I want to be, but I'm a lot closer than where I was, and I owe a part of it to you. Oh my gosh. Um, you're you're welcome. You know these are these are the things that kind of make me want to cry, <laughs> because you know you don't as a as a person who just gives dad advice, I can say that you don't you don't know if your advice actually is going to help anybody. Um, I know my kids get a lot of dad advice from me, but, and I can see the progress that my kids make, but on the other side, when I just give it blatantly on, uh, and out there in, in, to the masses in, in, uh, on social media worlds, you don't know if it's ever going to help anybody. So all those haters that I read the, their emails earlier, come back and read and, and listen to this. You know, being the thing again, you know, you're, you're telling me that my advice helped you through get through a tough breakup. Breakups suck, and I have I and I have recommended people to break up with their boyfriend or thing or girlfriend or things like that. I have said that. I know I have, and that's kind of sucky. But if you're not getting the respect and the things that you deserve in a relationship, then why are you with the person? There's no need to be with that person. You need to be doing the you need to be doing the things that can help you progress and become a better person. So if you're a better person, you can be a better human in, in our society. You can help other people out. You're not just always drugged down by your own uh, in, you know insecurities. You actually can can uh, make your life that much better. So people need to stop being so 
stuck and so, you know, feeling like they have to stay with somebody, especially if they're just dating because they don't want to be alone. It is okay to be alone. You learn, I'll tell you what the superpower would be. If you learn to be happy and alone by yourself, your life will change so much better. And then if you can be happy by yourself, then you, that will make you a better, a, a way better partner for anyone you're going to be with. So I'm going to say thank you for thanking me. Really, I mean that, I, I mean that from the, the bottom of my heart. That is awesome. Because, you know, I, I, I think that that's an act of kindness that has helped build me up and make me and to make me feel good. I'm, you just made me feel good. And I, I appreciate it. Seriously. Thank you. Anyway, well, we're going to get out of here. We're going to stop this thing and we're going to move on and and I just want to tell you guys that, you know what? I appreciate everything you guys do. Even the hate email that you guys send me. I, I, I appreciate that. You've been, you know, I'm sorry that my advice may not have worked out for you. But I'm also happy that my advice has worked out for some people. Again, it's just dad advice. I have no qualifications other than the fact that I'm a father. So there's that. Anyway. Don't forget to go like and follow and uh, share the, share this with everybody. I share the little clips that I post to people. Don't forget to do all that because that helps me out. That helps me provide for my family as my family should be provided for. Um, you guys have been amazing. You're awesome. I seriously, I seriously mean every bit of that. And I'll tell you what, I'll say it. Thank you. Seriously, I, I truly, truly thank you. Anyway. I will talk to you guys later. We'll see ya.